What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the all-new iPad Mini. Mini because it has a 7.9-inch screen versus the 9.7-inch screen on the classic iPad or the iPad with Retina display. Now, this is available for $329, starting at $329 for 16-gig Wi-Fi models, and you can uh, go up to 32 or 64-gig. You just have to add $100 for each increment above that. You can also add 4G LTE connectivity to this for another $130. Uh, this is available in two colors, so we have the white and silver versus the black and slate. So we're going to look at both of them in this video and see which one you like best. Now the versions I have here are the basic standard Wi-Fi versions. These do not have 4G LTE. Those are shipping at mid-November so I can't review that yet but I do have one in order so stay tuned for that video and we can take a look at them. Now 4G LTE obviously adds cellular connectivity so you can take your iPad mini anywhere uh, and you can still have internet access. 4G LTE models also carry GPS antennas. The Wi-Fi versions like these do not. Now the 4G LTE versions work on Sprint, Verizon, or or AT&T, so those are the only carriers currently supporting the iPad Mini. Now the first Mini I'm going to take a look at is the white and silver, so I just need to crack into this box. A few of the plastic here. Alright, so we're just going to lift the lid here. And there is the iPad Mini. We have a little tab here to lift it up. So underneath are all the accessories, and we'll take a look at this in great detail in just a minute. So here we have our Literature packet designed by Apple in California. So we crack this open, we shall find a quick start guide which basically tells you about the buttons and controls as well as the ports. We also have our Apple info or iPad info which includes warranty and licensing information and we also have our Apple stickers. Now below that we'll find our lightning to USB cable here, again that smaller USB cable which is also available on the iPhone 5, the iPod Touch 5th generation, the new 4th generation iPad with Retina display. Also inside is our familiar 5 watt power adapter which ships with iPhones. So the iPad mini does without that 12 watt adapter which you need for the 4th generation iPad with Retina display. Now onto the iPad mini, we just need to peel off this wrapper here. Slide it out, and we can take a close look around. So on the back we have that nice anodized raw aluminum, in this case on the white and silver version. So we have the iPad logo. We have the Apple logo, which is polished into the metal. Very nice detail, just like the iPhone 5. Now along the side we'll find our volume up and down buttons, which are metal instead of plastic. We also have a metal uh, switch here for mute or for rotation lock, depending on how you have that configured. You also have your 5 megapixel EyeSight camera. No flash in this case like you get on the iPod Touch 5th generation, but this is this has auto focusing, stabilization, and many other features. We also have our sleep wake button up here, and we have our headphone jack up here. Down in the center, we have our microphone. Along the bottom, we'll find our stereo speakers here flanking either side of the lightning connector. So this is actually the first iOS device with stereo speakers, a fact that for some reason Apple has chosen not to highlight. It doesn't even mention this in the specs, at least at the time of this filming. Uh, so this should give us better audio. This is actually better uh, than the fourth generation iPad, which has a mono speaker. Now taking a look at the front of the device, you can see that bezel, which is a little different this time for the iPad. The iPad usually has a uniform bezel all around it, but the Mini has gone with a slimmer bezel for one-handability while still maintaining this large display. So this is kind of a traditional 4x3 display versus a 16x9 display. The idea here is that even if you are handling it in a traditional sense, for example, if you're reading a book, the software will recognize the presence of your thumb holding the screen versus an intentional press of the screen. So hopefully that works as advertised. Uh, Along the bottom we'll find our home button, which is pretty familiar, and along the side you notice that polished chamfer, which looks very nice, especially on a larger device like this. We've seen this on the iPhone, the iPod Touch 5th generation, but it looks really nice here. And they've really paid a lot of attention to the fact that this bezel perfectly meets up with the glass, so it's a very nice seamless design. Now up top we'll also find our 720p HD FaceTime camera, along with an ambient light sensor right next to it. Now onto the black and slate iPad mini here. There's actually a little packaging malfunction here. This is upside down. So basically this lid is should be the other way around because this information should be on the bottom which lines up with the bottom of the iPad uh, mini. So anyway, we're gonna skip that and we're just gonna go ahead and crack it open. Alrighty, so lift the lid. Alrighty, so there it is. We have a little tab here to lift it up. 
gonna set this aside for just a minute. Again, we have our five watt power adapter, our literature, as well as our lightning connector. So we know that from the last unboxing. So let's get to what differs, which is the black and slate. So let's just pull this tab here. Always a satisfying sound. And on the back, you see that beautiful anodized finish. You can see it kind of has a bluish tint to it. It's not just black, so they call it slate because of that. It kind of has a stone color, very sharp. So taking a look at the back panel, you can see our Apple logo is polished into the metal. So you can see it's not just an insert or sticker over the metal. It's actually polished into it. Very nice. On the bottom, again, we'll find our stereo speakers along with a lightning connector, which actually is color matched to the body. On the side, we'll find our mellow buttons here, so our volume up and down button, as well as our rotation lock or mute switch. We have our camera, our five megapixel camera, along with our sleep wake button up here, our microphone, and our headphone jack with the colored inserts. Along the front, we'll find our home button, along with that beautiful chamfer, which is, again, polished to a mirror finish, and again, kind of seamlessly matches up with the glass panel. Now comparing the colors side by side, you can see the classic difference between the black and white versions of the Apple iPad. The white version shows off the border between the screen and the rest of the iPad. It also shows off the cutouts for the camera as well as ambient light sensor. Now the black version looks very monolithic, so you don't really see any of those details unless the screen is turned on. Now along the back, you can see a big difference here as well. So the anodized finish here is sort of a coating on the aluminum, while the white version is raw aluminum. So it's pretty much the raw material. So even if you look at the uh, Polished Apple logo, you can see it's pretty much a mirror. This is a little smokier in terms of its reflection. Now, if you look really closely, you can see that they've color matched everything. Even the ring around the camera, the metal buttons, and the sleep-wake button. Uh, even along the bottom, if you look at the dock connector here, you can see that the insert on the white and silver iPad is white versus the black insert on the black and slate version. Now, if you look at the side, you can see they both have that mirrored chamfered edge uh, with the uh, raw loom. You can see it's more of a mirror versus that sort of smoky color on the slate version. Now, even the headphone jack also has a white insert versus the black insert on the black iPad. Even the microphone grill here is silver versus black, and you can see the sleep wake button. Now overall, the black and slate version kind of has that monotone look to it, so everything is one color. It's pretty stealthy looking. There is one drawback to this uh, anodized finish, which is the fact that not only does it has, have a tendency to scratch, when you scratch this, it reveals the raw aluminum underneath, uh, but it also shows fingerprints. But otherwise, it's a pretty sharp product, and it's actually more durable than we've been led to believe. So if you really scratch this, it's kind of hard to really get down to the raw aluminum. Now, the white and silver version looks pretty nice. Again, this is that raw aluminum, so if you scratch this, you're less likely to notice it because it won't reveal a different color underneath because it's pretty much the color of the metal. Uh, and I really like the fact that we have that mirrored chamfered edge. It's a really beautiful design detail, but of course, you're probably going to cover it up with the case, but still, it looks very sharp. Now, quickly taking a look at the iPad, I've booted it up here. We can set it up really quickly. All right, so we're done setting up our iPad mini pretty quick and simple. Now the iPad mini does feature Siri, so we can test that out. What's the weather like in Rochester? Okay, here's the weather for Rochester through Wednesday. Where is the nearest Apple store? I found seven Apple stores. They're pretty far from Rochester. Now the iPad mini has that 7.9 inch display with a screen resolution of 1024 by 768, which is good for 163 PPI. That's much less than the 265 or 64 of the iPad fourth generation or the iPad retina display. Uh, but the display still looks pretty high quality. It is uh, pretty close to the surface of the glass. So you don't get a lot of glare or refraction. So it still looks like a high quality display, but you can definitely notice some pixels. So if you look really close up, you can see there is some noticeable pixelation, but it's still a pretty good looking display. Now this is powered by an A5 dual core processor. This also has half a gig of RAM. So this is kind of last generation specs. So this is pretty much mirroring the iPad 2 specs or the uh, iPod Touch fifth generation specs. Now, in case you're wondering about this camera, it does not have the panorama or HDR features, which are available on the iPod Touch fifth generation. So you can see basically have grid and that's about all. Now, just to show you the size comparison between the mini and the standard size iPad, you can see it is much smaller. See, we have a smaller bezel as well as a smaller screen, but you maintain that same aspect ratio. So all the apps and the, basically the operating system is the same. You even have multi multitasking gestures, just like on the iPad 2 and the iPad 4th generation. Now, if we add an iPhone to the mix, you can see we get a little more reference here. 
Now the iPad mini is pretty lightweight. It actually weighs less than half of the iPad fifth generation. It definitely notices. That's the first thing you're going to notice when you handle this device. It's fairly comfortable to hold, although it is a little wider than something like the Nexus 7. So you're probably going to want to hold it this way, not really in one hand like this over a long period of time. So this does feel pretty comfortable. And I think there is enough bezel here, but um, a time will tell to see how comfortable this is. Now side by side, you can see the iPad mini is quite a bit smaller than the iPad fourth generation, but it's very similar in thickness to the iPhone 5. So with the iPad mini, you basically have a screen size for everybody. The iPod Nano, the iPhone and the iPod Touch, the iPad mini, and the iPad with Retina display. Now the iPad mini pretty much joins the iPod Nano, the iPhone 5, the iPod Touch 5th generation in terms of its design aesthetic. So it looks pretty similar. You have that mirrored chamfered edge. We have those circular cutouts for the grills. Of course, the lightning connectors as well. Now we also have slate versions of the iPod Nano, the iPhone 5, the iPod Touch 5th generation, and the iPad mini. Now the iPad 4th generation with the Retina display still has a silver back panel. It doesn't have that mirrored uh, edge. So it still has to be updated to sort of pick up the design details of the newer generation of products from Apple, so hopefully we'll see that eventually. So my initial impressions of the iPad mini are very positive. So even if it doesn't have the retina display, the display quality is pretty good. And I love the form factor here. It's much more small and compact and much lighter weight. So it's more comfortable to use than the heavier iPad with that gorgeous retina display. But still, this is probably a lot more useful. It's kind of like the iP uh, MacBook Air for me. It's uh, not as good as the MacBook with retina display, but I'm more likely to carry this around. So stay tuned for more coverage on the iPad mini. I'm going to do a lot more with this, including benchmarking, speed tests, camera tests, and a final review. So I hope to see you guys again in the next video.